Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I am talking to a person based in Mexico who was recommended to me by another person that's been on the show before. Uh, it's a webcomic artist who does a comic called Little M. And I hear the story about how the comic started, how it's kind of based on family life uh, it, growing up and stuff like that, just based on experiences and people that he knows. He was influenced a lot by uh, comic books growing up. He loves the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which nothing wrong with that because I enjoyed that while I was growing up too. And uh, we just talk a lot about comics and uh, using technology and also trying to get into animation or going to school for animation. So it's a great conversation. It's fun. Glad that he uh, wanted to talk to me today and uh this conversation is done over audio because he didn't really want to do video. So that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. So this is the audio only version, but here's my conversation starting right now. My name is G.I. Dominguez. I'm the, a comic artist and I created the webcomic Little M and the webcomic We Are the Matrices. I have the title of Friend of the World and Enemy of Santa Claus. How are you doing, Tom? I'm good. I only knew about one of the comics. So when you sent me, when you contacted me, you had uh, you had one comic that you were doing, or at least the one yeah, you sent me your Twitter hand. Yes. Yeah. And so I only was able to find that. I tried looking up your name and tried to find out. So I'm I'm walking into this one somewhat blind yeah, as 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 yeah, to what you do. Somewhat of a very 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 niche comic artist because okay. I'm, I'm from Chiapas, Mexico, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't, f don't have enough wider audience because I mostly make my comics in English because I believe I will grab a bigger audience here in the English landscape. Little Lamb began in August tw 28, uh, 2020. And I did it because uh, the, the, the inception of Little Lamb had in my head like a few years prior, like I believe 2019, I brought the idea, but it wasn't a year later that I have the idea very conceptualized. Mm -hmm. So uh, Little Lamb is about this little girl in our frog pajamas called Little Lamb that goes around and causes mayhem and havoc and destruction all around this one si unspecified city of Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, against her, with her is the very big and emotional mother, Casey. And the uh, the depressed teenager that is Maggie. Well, she's not actually a teenager. She's like, I believe, young adult Maggie. Uh -huh. That she's his big sister, and she's always depressed. She's always angry, and she's always literally main target in her in her <laughs> right. in her adventures. Right? Yeah. Why? Why Minneapolis? Why did you choose to set it in Minneapolis? Minneapolis. Uh, that's an interesting story because prior to Little Lamb, I had a test comic called gather adventures and i was publishing in a in a website i think it's called smack gifs okay and i generally wasn't having any any success with that comic but one day some guy came to my comment section and typed hey i'm john from minnesota and here's my number call me for a fight and i, I was like what huh what <laughs> that and I actually brought that fat out to one of my friends who also draws comics yeah and he said dude you should make little Little M take place in Minnesota because they were ending in M. And I was like, that was amazing. I want that. Wait, he just contacted you and said, call me for yeah, a fight? Out of, no, out of nowhere. He just called me for a fight. Just called me for a fight. Like, he believed it was some kind of fight club or taxi driver or something. But there was nothing that prompted it, like, in the comic or, like, he was no, saying no, your like, stuff is, or there was something that offended him in the comic. It was no, just, like, absolutely not. random. It's like, out of random, out of the blue, because God of Adventure was just, like, a guy who gets superpowers and stuff. Okay. I was so weird. Well, maybe <laughs> the person was, maybe the person was role-playing as a character? I don't know. I'm don't, trying. Don't I'm trying so. to figure out some think... dumb comment from the internet, and like the internet's I mean, the riddled internet with comments that make really no sense. Weird. Yeah, really, yeah. Like the internet's really weird. Really, <laughs> really weird. Okay. All right. It's, uh, that actually uh, is probably a, a great description then for why it's in Minneapolis. That's <laughs> was not expecting that. Okay. Now, why uh, did you why did you start making web comics? Like you, you uh, said you had done some. Like what? What's yeah, the reason I for started, doing them? I started making webcomics back in 2019, and 
I wanted to do it because I really wanted to plasmate my ideas and my stories and my stuff in a, in a way that I could also show my drawing. Because ever since I was little, I really liked to draw. And, I, and people told me I wasn't good. So what I did was <laughs> take this comic as a challenge and I started drawing and drawing and drawing every day until eventually I got better. Yeah. And that's well, one of my main inspirations of doing web comics. My second other inspiration is that when I was a kid, I used to like and read comics as well. Uh, one of my main inspirations is Mafalda. I don't know if you don't, you know Mafalda. It's no. about it's a, a strip comic from Argentina okay. that is about a little girl who always complains about the war, who always is complaining about the politics of like I believe ninety seven. Dictatorship hmm. of Argentina, okay. and she's always eloquent. And, and also, read it, believe I, contrary to my work says, I'm not very fond into comic strips. I'm most into superhero comics. Like, I believe my first comic was a Batman one, uh, right. where he travels to Rio de Janeiro and fights some guy with telekinetic powers. Oh, I wonder which uh, one that is. <laughs> yeah, it, I, have a, I have a very extensive Batman comic collection, so I'm trying to think I of think when that would called, be. Uh, I only know the comic in Spanish. I believe it's called La Raiz Idiota. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the villain is called the Idiot. It's uh-huh. like that. Okay. But so uh, the only strip comics I read when I was a kid was uh, Mafalda, uh, and I believe something about Peanuts too. And yeah, I I I also never really into Garfield. I believe. Oh, I was into Garfield very much growing up. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's one of my main inspirations of what comics because uh, Mafalda's author, Kino, or Joaquin Robles Lavador, I don't know his name. I just know his alias Kino. Okay. He, uh, he was a very creative person. He always saw, he always cracked me up. Even when I was a kid, I, and I didn't get the political and social commentary of Mafalda. Oh, yeah. I was just laughing at the fact that. Mafalda compared one of his friends' head to a shoe, and I was like, ha, 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 that's, "Yeah, that's one of the reasons that inspired me to do web com- uh, web comics in general." Yeah, because Kino's work it was amazing, and I really do hope to be like him one day. Okay, so you were you were influenced definitely by a comic strip style. Yes, okay. and also another person who had a very very high inflation of of my style is my friend D Parson. Okay. He made these comics called uh, Life with Kurami and Pen and Ink and Rosewood. Most specifically Rosewoods. I was obsessed with Rosewoods. And when I get to meet him, I was like, wow, dude, I love your work. Dude. I, but like he has some dynamics with the sisters that are the protagonists of Rosebuds. And I was like, man, that's incredible. That's, Amazing, and he actually helped me out to make Little M what it is today. Pretty much, without D, uh, Little M will be will be a completely different being yeah. of what it is today. Okay. He also created a character for uh, Little M called Better Little M, who is a mutated frog that goes around and eats everything, <laughs> kind of like Alf. Okay. So, you, so, so far you've been influenced by people telling me your stuff stinks and people helping you create what you're trying to create. So you've got, you've got it for both sides here with, with the creative Perfectly process. of balanced, getting... like all things should be. <laughs> so why now you said you were doing it to get your stories out there and to become a better artist. Like when, like, were you writing stories already? It's, I mean, it's uh, tough, actually, it's tough I, to put I together really, stories, I, you know? When I was in college, in school, they were assigning me those stories that I believe like in fifth, sixth grade, I was starting writing stories and stuff because I was in a kind of a segment. But I, that's where I discovered I was very into writing and telling my stories. And because Fantasy I was having stories absolutely or... fun. Or, like fantasy stories or like what kind stories of stories in general okay stories in general i i was fascinated that telling these people and who they are and i believe someone told me that if they like writing for a reason is that they can't play god okay. and i completely agree with that because you can 
give the setting or the background oh, yeah. of the characters. You can describe how the characters feel, how they act, and that's what really gets me. Like I yeah. get to decide how these people act and how these, especially when uh, something like We Are the Madrizas, because uh, We Are the Madrizas is a very personal project of mine because it's based on my family experience and my how my family treated me and stuff like that. How they always were to support me and, and yeah, that's that's the stuff like. They always were for me, and you know, I wanted to give them a, a little, pay, a little pay, like thanks for, for believing in me. Here's the result, and that's how we are the Madrizas came to be. Okay, and when we started the before we started recording this conversation today, we were talking, and you were saying how um, even though you draw stuff and put it online, you're not necessarily technically inclined. How did you go from no, drawing to going to this? Is how you put it on the computer? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was like. <laughs> That's an actually very large history that I uh, tell me all about really it. I'm curious to see okay, the process. So it is start. It all started. It all started when I grabbed uh, some pencils and I was drawing, and then uh, I stumbled about uh, my dad's computer. I believe. Okay. Like when I was like real old, I asked my dad, "Dad, what is technology?" You, you know, like that <laughs> you just flat out were like, "What? Joel, what in like, general it's is magic, it?" It's magic, Joel. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since that day, little GA wasn't the same. Uh -huh. So yeah, I discovered this thing called scanner, and I tried to put my drawers in the computer. It wasn't until very, very, very much later that I discovered uh, the the graphic tablets, and they were a thing. Yeah. So I, but they were expensive. So I decided to gather some money and buy my first graphic tablet. It was like I believe a Huayan. Okay. It was a very tiny one graphic tablet and yeah i wasn't like where's the screen right when i get my first i was like sawing all these graphic tablets with screens and when i got my uh my first graphic tablet i was like wait a minute yeah it's the one where it's, it's just candy. a where's, slate that you're drawing screen? yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute where's the you lied to me how could you <laughs> so i uh so i started drawing there and and again in the basics honestly like getting like digital and different K layers and stuff like that. It wasn't until I met Clip Studio Paint oh, that okay. I made my comic processing really, really, really easy. Because when I got my first graphic tablet, I was just like throwing nonsense, like throwing nonsensical stuff until I decided, hey, I should make a comic with this. Mm -hmm. And I did. Sadly, I didn't have the tools. So I, I could describe the process. I used Paint to its eye to draw the the characters and the panels and then i used photoshop to do the bubbles and okay. it was a really tedious process like i have to worry about one thing the one day and the other with like we we clips to arrive and i'm sounding like a or like a product placement with like when clips to arrive <laughs> i was like i can do this all in just one program that's amazing and I, yeah I well i mean technically you could in any of them it's just the preference of because even when you were saying you did the bubbles in photoshop i'm like well i used to do them in illustrator and i would do the drawing in photoshop you know it's 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 all preference you know it, it, yeah, you technically like, could do yeah, them all my, my in one teachers had a, my teachers who taught me uh digital have a weird obsession with photoshop I, oh so you did I take classes on it yeah, oh, like, okay. I can literally animate in Photoshop, okay. even though that's not convenient. <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually a student right now. I'm taking, a, I'm in university right now. I believe I'm taking an animation degree because oh, nice. I really hope one day I get to animate one of my comics. Uh-huh. It, yeah, yeah. That's it's an it. It seems like it's not a big jump to go from comics into animation, but they're very different things. But yeah, they're absolute monsters yeah. of itself. <laughs> yeah. And I'm get, really getting used to it. Like I love animating in some capacity. Yeah, I do love animating in uh, Clip Studio Paint and in After Effects. Like I get these classes on how these persons like to tell their stories and the beings yeah. and. Yeah, it's like really helpful and really useful. It also helps me to make more friends that are also into this artistical way. Yeah. That yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Really outstanding. Are you so you're more into the two dimensional animation and not the three dimensional? Yeah, obviously. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I, just, I, I can't get into the three. Uh, I can't I, get into. I yeah, I kind of get into three D as well. It seems so. It it. 
okay, it seems like it's more realistic. Like when you do it, it's more realistic looking like you see your Pixar and everything all that. But to me, the movement, like the cartoon movements on it seem so phony. It doesn't yeah. seem, it doesn't seem, I don't know. There's, there's even, I can't think yeah, of the name like, of the movie. If that's you ask right me, now. If you ask me like every CI movie that came out after, I believe, Ice Age 2, they've been like, <laughs> Everything robot the size engine. Yeah, I like the ICH franchise. Fight me. <laughs> yeah, I just... and I uh, and I like they feel roboticized and very generic. It wasn't until I believe I saw Spider Man into the Spider Verse that I okay. really loved the CI animation. Yeah, but that's video gaming whole... animation. You know, I'm talking about like cartoon animation. You know, this... oh, you mean cartoon anim? I <laughs> never. I'm not very into 3D and cartoon animation. No. the only show I know is. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2012 <laughs> version, because I'm, because everyone who knows me, Tom, and yeah. you hear this right, everyone who knows me can guarantee you that you are going to get like a one hour paragraph of how much VA loves the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> See, I was into yeah. the '90s version of and the Teenage the Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I didn't. Oh, you, the, yeah. the '80s version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like the reason why I like the TMNT so much is because they taught me. No matter how much uh, in, uh, an idea can sound very, very dumb, it okay. can somehow get to work. Because if you go to the seventies and tell someone, "Hey, this, this franchise, this thing about teenage mutant ninja turtles who go around and say cowabunga and eat pizza is going to be a massive, big franchise in the future," they're gonna tell you you're nuts. Right. Gonna, that's one one of my inspirations. It's something like teenage mutant ninja turtles managed to get in the the big spotlight, something like my stuff can do too. Yeah. And well, when that came about too, like when it got big and now I'm going to tell you my history on that. So the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out from the comic book and everybody loved it. And it was also the same time that Ben, uh, Ben Edlund, I always say his name wrong. Uh, the guy who created the tick, it was the same sort of thing. It was these underground comics with these superheroes that were, were just like, there was no, there was no, uh, you know brooding or anything no there was no brooding or like backstory or anything yeah, it was like, just like here's I, I these guys that are like superpowers for some reason you know <laughs> yeah yeah i i do love a lot of underground and indie comics yeah i mean as we're talking right now just recently i finished uh invincible the original oh yeah comic. yeah uh-huh. it's amazing really really good like invincible really inspired me with with his writing because robert kirkman is a genius i i tell you that when, I, I need to read The Walking Dead too. Yeah, the the uh, when I first started reading the book, it also came out. It was recommended to me by the guys at the comic book store I went to, and they were like, "You got to start reading this." And I'm reading it, and I'm like, "It's just another comic. Some teenager. It turns out he's gonna get superpowers." Like, it took a really long time for the story yeah, to when- do what it did. And that's why the animated version of it, I love the animated one that just came out because they do yeah, it in the first episode. Like they cover yeah, that whole the gamut. First, but like first episode <laughs> here, this is invincible. But right. Yeah. I do, I do like the animated version. The only issue that I have with it is that the animation looks a little bit choppy. Yeah. Like the CGI oh, Mr. Mr. In school for animation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course. You I, have say a, that. I went to college. Like Matt and say. <laughs> yeah. So it's, what what are you animating in college? Like what type of stuff are they having you do there? Uh, um, as of right now, we're um, we're just animating like integra- integrating projects like commercials and okay. really 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 rough tests. Like as of recently, I have my one of my tests involve uh, drawing a animating a, a fully articulated character like move his limbs around and speak and. Uh, yeah, we're really, we're doing really really stuff, really rough stuff because my career that is animation mm-hmm. is in a very big in this part of the country that is Mexico. It isn't. So like, no, it isn't. It isn't like huh. animation as in Mexico is only limited to like two studios, I believe, and and that Mexican series that got pitched by Cartoon Network, I believe it's called Villanos. Have right. you ever heard of that? Yeah, and and, and uh, I was gonna say because I know that there's um or at least has in the past been um a place where a lot of in betweening animation is done, but it's done in studios, and I didn't know if there was more yeah, than where, a lot of them there or not. Yeah, yeah. There's also this web series that I was following called uh, it's like a, it's called Betelaberge. It's like 
it was an uh, an adult series like uh, a la style of Happy to Friends and I believe uh, what is it called Run Together. It mm -hmm. was like that's that's the stuff that Mondo Mini what, Studios what, is what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 Mondo Media and Happy to Friends and Gondor and Jet. That's like one of the stuff that teach me that everybody could do animation. Mm -hmm. So when I <laughs> obviously my parents didn't allow me to watch it because you know how the nature of Happy to Friends is. Yeah. No, that's when I started doing it too. Like when I, that was during the, uh, that was during the uh, bubble like boom of, of animation on online an, online animation with Flash and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah. When I discovered, I, I can make this too. And so I did. I remember downloading a program called uh, Pivot. I don't know if you know it. It's, no. It's pretty much uh, an animated program based on vectors. Okay. Uh, it's mostly pro use the sticks and stick mans. Oh, and like no, the tough not the, stuff they used to do on not, Newgrounds. Yeah, like stuff they do on Newgrounds. Yeah. And yeah, I was like very into a series called, I don't know if you can say the name, like mm -hmm. Stick Figures Insanity or Stick Figures in, on Crack. Yeah. It was just a bunch of random, random adult jokes and random mm -hmm. quotes from cinema. And that was like, hey, that... That's how I unironically learn English. Oh, really? <laughs> that I, yeah, that and the Pokemon games. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you learned English from a Japanese game that was translated into English. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, okay, a, that, and an American web series, yes. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. So you said before that um, that you're actually wanting to pursue a career in animation is what you're saying. And, yeah, exactly. and, and, but there's no real opportunities out there. So what is your, what is your hope when, uh, from doing this web comic and, and learning animation? Like wh what do you hope to do? Uh, what I hope to do is, uh, is just basically getting recognition and uh -huh. also getting a lot of people to like my stuff and, so they can feel uh, a little bit of connection with my characters and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't do this for the money. I must do it for the love of art and the love of of having exposure and such. And I also like doing this kind of because I really like to show people my stuff because I am proud of my stuff. I yeah. Am, uh, hey, I made this. And I believe in the Simpsons say this, like in the episode where Mars starts a a business of making statues. Like mm -hmm. I want the people to know that I was here. The people in the generations of the future that I was here. I was important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so kind of, leave, of my... to leave a mark as well is what you're saying. Yeah, leave a mark. Huh. Leave a mark. That's an interesting way of putting it. I, I like that. Huh. It, it's so you. You how do you how do you get the word out there about your about the work that you do or when you post things like what's how how are you telling people about it? Uh, well, I post it on Twitter and I also go around and tell people about my comic and my stuff. You know the reason why uh, we are the Matrices has a, a Spanish version is mostly because I want to also include the people that are around me and they are around my my part of the world and because I wanted to not let them miss the, miss this out. Mm -hmm. And also because of my mom, because she doesn't know English very well. So that's what I do. That's I, I go to people and I have the amazing luck that I have a lot of people that love me and, and they have, and they care about me that my comics get spread a lot. Like my mom, the, the first thing she does when she talks, it's like my son is making this comic. You should check this out and shows people this comic and they are busting laughing. <laughs> yeah. And also getting a, a, a deal with a magazine, I believe it's called Red Kappa Comics. Uh, they're amazing. They're amazing guys. They're like, yeah, they're I saw that. Fans. Yeah. Who is, who is that? I saw that. You, and uh, I didn't, it's now that, that account is in Spanish. Um, yeah, so I was I didn't I wasn't able to figure out uh, uh, a lot Red about Kappa it. Comics is a magazine that I've been working on for like I believe last January. And is it you are, or is it with somebody? Like what's the what's with the history? Some, it's a it's a bunch of people that I believe are used to be comic YouTubers that are getting around and making their own magazine of people and, co and comic creators and writers and stuff. 
Okay. Uh, I believe the second, the first issue came out right before I wor- start working with them, mm-hmm. and the second issue I believe is coming in between early or mid May. They're amazing guy. Like uh, one of the people that works there is Rana TV, I believe it's called. He he, I love his content. Like he's one of the reasons that I'm so into TMNT, and I uh, like I like that the fact that he's now interacting and he tells me advice on how to improve the draw and there are amazing people they are and we are getting this comic to promote ourselves and tell this is our stuff this is our this is our thing and to also help in the comic creators mm-hmm. what when you say issue in what format is is the issue like how does it come it's out it's like an it's like an anthology i believe they are getting published in his official website uh, uh, which is a blog blog post uh, mm-hmm. in a PDF format. Okay, so, so it, it is in a digital format. It's not like a print format or anything. Yeah, it's like not that. like a print. It's not. It's like a digital format to get these indie authors to more exposure. Okay, and what do, what do those issues entail? Like what what's inside of them? I didn't I didn't see one of those issues. Uh, so what it's is just it? A, it's a bunch of histories and comics from very different authors, like. Each, everyone, they, they tell their own story. It's not like the Mad Magazine where there's like focusing right. on parodying or like Tales of the Creed where it's just focused on terror. No, it's like variety and stuff. It's like uh, an, uh, an anthology, what you might say. Mm-hmm. The- so uh, we we gather up and we just publish different stories, every different issue, I believe. Mm-hmm. And-, and we're working pretty great, actually. How did you, and so how exactly did you meet? Uh, we meet for, uh, like I said, I follow this YouTuber called Rana TV or El Show the Rana. Yeah. So I found his video about Red Kappa Comics and they were open, uh, a, a, like a new, we're looking for a new comic artist. Okay, so, so it was like, a call I sent an email. Yeah. Okay. So I like, I sent an email and they say, this is amazing. We want you there and everyone and. And that's how it happened. It, I believe the uh, the second issue is gonna have the six first strips of We Are the Madrizas. Yeah, and yeah, and giving them the stuff for like three or four issues for the magazine. Okay, it's really amazing to work with them. Have you have you started? At, I, I know that you said that they were uh, comic YouTubers. Have you? I, I wasn't able to find a YouTube account for you. Have you been doing any comic? Uh, YouTube no, stuff? I don't do doing the YouTube because most of the people that I know that are into YouTube say yeah. that YouTube is a hell to do okay. because there's like stuff like algorithm and demonetization and you know, like the Q I don't do YouTube because I know it's hard Okay. because I know it's very, very hard and comics are very niche topic and I won't, I won't get the less clicks, I believe. Okay. So that's the reason why I don't do YouTube because I, and also, well, I did do YouTube. I just uploaded a video that was a school test. Oh, yes, okay. But it's yeah, but that's Spanish. that's just you're doing homework. That's not like I started yeah. a channel. You know? No, I don't, I don't do a channel because I don't know. I feel it's like there was a time I actually tried to do a YouTube channel. It was like a commentary channel about movies and stuff. In but I didn't came out as well because. Yeah, the, the edition was pretty poor. The, okay. The, the, the pictures were literally made in MS Paint. So like, no, nah, I, I don't want this. Yeah. So that's why I don't do YouTube. Okay. And, and now you had mentioned when we started out a bunch of other comics and uh, I was unaware of these comics. Now, where have you been posting those? Because like, how would I find these other comics that you mentioned? The, and then you had one with, the, with Santa Claus in the title or something? <laughs> Oh, uh, no, no, no. The enemy of Santa Claus is just a reference to Invader Seam. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I yeah, missed I've that. Been reading a lo- I've been reading a lot of Invader Seam comics, actually. OK, I did see that you posted a thing where you did a you did an Invader Zim drawing. OK, that, yeah. that went right over my head. OK, I missed it. Sorry. So, OK, <laughs> about the comics. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Gunner Adventures is in my in a web series called Smack Jeeves. And I don't think Smack Jeeves is up anymore. And right, I, I, I haven't heard that one in a while. I know yeah, you're you're posting a, on I, Tapas though. The Gather Adventures comics was first published on Smack Jeeves, but uh, like as the time went on, I found out that Smack Jeeves was bought off, and 
they went offline and so sadly gather adventures is now lost media because i lost all the the panels and the pages i had in my old oh. computer when i had to reboot it now little m little m is primarily on my twitter and there's a tumblr archive where you can find in my in the pinned twitter i have about little m and we are the madrices is the one that's getting both versions spanish and english in my Twitter and also in Tapas. Mm -hmm. uh, I got into Tapas because a friend of mine, I think you know her, uh, Awesome Studios, yep. uh, the, gar the girl who makes Jump Hero, recommend me the, the site. Now, with posting on these different places and also putting out the comic there, what would you say that is the hardest part about making web comics for you? The hardest part for me about making web comics is, in fact, getting people to watch your web comics yeah because there's like a lot of a lot and i mean a lot of people who are also making their web comics but don't see it as a competition but rather as a as a way to because when you start out uh, basically nobody knows who you are or what you're doing so the the hardest part of doing a web comic is uh to get people know your web comic because there I, I what i say is try to promote and market your comic to get it into as many people as possible mm -hmm. because not a lot of people web like i said earlier comics are a very niche topic it's not like superhero movies you say well superhero movies are based on comics yes and they are their own thing and so uh the cop the comics don't get as much exposure as those movies so you gotta learn how to market it I like get it around getting into people read your stuff. Yeah. But another hard thing with web comics is that sometimes the sometimes the paneling doesn't work. Sometimes the the speech doesn't come out as because I have a lot of trouble struggling to fit a lot of dialogue in just four panels or three. Right. So I gotta be clever with that stuff. Yeah. No, no, I, I limit mine to four panels too. And sometimes it's like, I got to rewrite that thing a few times to go like, well, how am I going to, you can't just dump a big, huge, you know, word panel on the last one. Yeah. Like, what do you think you are, Alan Moore? <laughs> nice. Well, I, I like that reference. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, but it's, uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's like, I even layer two stories, like I'll have a narrative box at the top and then a discussion box that's about a completely different thing underneath. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a fun little experiment though. I know that. Uh, well, uh, I, that's interesting. What I do to, when I script my comics is basically just write the, the scene uh -huh. panel by panel, like panel one, uh, it's Ayana is drinking a bottle and Valentina approaches like yeah. and they're Valentina. What are you doing? A panel two and panel two like that. Yeah. How many, how many episodes do you uh, write at a time? Like, do you do a whole batch of them or do a story arc or like how many, or do you only do them one at a time? Uh, I do comics like two, uh, two times per week, like two strip comics a week. Okay. That's how I do. And like, I have this very strict schedule about the, the doing of these comics. Like in Tuesday, I do the sketch of the first one. Wednesday, I do the sketch of the second one. But and what about the writing? Thursday, like, do you write the story the same oh, time? The writing, the I do it. No, uh, the writing is very, very, very ahead. Like, okay, very future episodes and strips, comics, and all right. And so I write the stuff that comes next. Okay. So I wrote first. I do a sketch, and then I go into the scanner because I still not found to do digital sketching. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so afraid of my graphic tablet. Like I'm afraid I get a scratch. <laughs> so like I do the the traditional sketch and and make it digital. And it takes me like four to five hours to finish a, oh. a strip comic. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It, it, that that if it is the background is in detail because sometimes I want a an, a detailed background. So there it goes. And yeah, it takes an out. First, there's a sketch. Then there's the digitalization. Then mm -hmm. there is the the publish. I usually go to Twitter to schedule the the comics in Tuesdays and Thursdays, and also go to the OneDrive to save them to avoid 
having a gather adventure scenarios when it becomes lost media and it'll have a backup file. Right. That's the how, the process of how I make the comics. Well, do you have any plans to um, have a website specifically for the comic or what you do? Uh, I remember having a blog called uh, G.I. Dominguez Comic Book Shack. Yeah. That I used to do as an archive. Uh-huh. But like, that's about it. I didn't advance too much of it. Someday, okay. someday I will. Something I will if I want to archive where the materials are in a better quality. That is, well, I mean, even just to show more about like what you do, or if people want to kind of scroll through. I mean, yeah, I know they is. can on Twitter, but it's it's I don't know. It's not the same as a website, it's, or it's yeah, not, it's not the same. Yeah, and it's not really indexed. Is although I will say you do show up when I do. I mean, I found you on Twitter just by searching your name. So yeah. I don't know. It's hard to say, but having a website and something you can control. I mean, even on Tapa, Tapas, you were like, I don't like the width con- yeah, I, constraint, I but Tapas like, has you know, like, uh, like a social feature network where yeah. there's like, uh, an inbox and a wall, like of notifications, like, st- like something like Facebook, I believe. Yeah. Like the Tapas and you can command and you can, but I really want a blog because mm-hmm. a lot of, in professional industry people. That's kind of what I'm getting at. It's like, yeah, yeah. they'll want to see, like, they don't want to just go to your Twitter account. You know, they'll want to see like your portfolio or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, I was gonna, I go, go with that. And I also wanted to tell like the process of how these characters came to be and sure. concept arts. Yeah. That's like the main reason why I want a blog mm-hmm. because you, I can do it in separate articles and stuff. That's true. I mean, even I though tell- I like the, the, I mean, we're supposed to sit here and talk about the growth of it, but like people looking up your comic, they can't sit there and read through and go, well, what's the history behind this character? You know, they're only yeah, reading like, the comic. <laughs> what is the reason to live? Where is this, this tragic backstory? Where, in which alley their parents got killed? Exactly. <laughs> well, it got dark real fast. Um <laughs> And then if people wanted to know, like, what kind of things do you have coming up in the future? What are some things you'd like to tell people that uh, they can expect from what you have going on or what you're creating? But if you mean about arcs and histories on the comics themselves, yes, they do. Uh, with, little, with Little Lamb, I'm, like, more eccentric about the arcs they go, you know? How in the strip comics they have, like, normal arcs, like Garfield gets lasagna or Charlie Brown is sad. Yeah, I, I didn't want that. So I go straight, go up the window. I create the most crazy ideas. Like I believe the 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 arc that went into Little Lamb before entering the hiatus on Little Place to We Are the Matrices mm-hmm. was Little Lamb going down to hell and outsmarting the devil. Because I really wanted that, a devil history in my comic, as one does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, if people wanted to check out the comic, or I, what would where what is your Twitter handle that people could check out uh, to see more about your comic? Uh, my Twitter is at G. A. Dominguez ninety eighty four. Uh, that's a reference to the Mutant Ninja Turtles, by the way. And and also they can check the hashtag Little M Comic and Little M and We Are the Matrices. Thank you so much for reaching out to me and talking with me on the show today. Yeah, it's a really blast. 